So I'm 20 years old and I was born in the UK. I grew up in Brighton and I studied in Brighton as well. I used to study business studies in Brighton College and I also used to work as well. I used to like media, filming, a lot of creativity, designing, swimming sometimes, but mainly bodybuilding. I'm in the Syrian civil war because I believe it's my duty to fight here. As in Islam, uh, to the closest meaning of the Prophet said, the Muslim nation is like one body. If one part complains, the other parts react. So I don't see it as a Syrian conflict, I see it as an Islamic conflict. Twenty-year-old Amr the Gaius traveled to Syria to take part in the brutal conflict to overthrow the government of Bashar al-Assad, a foot soldier in a war that seen up to 150,000 people killed. His two brothers Abdullah and Jafar later joined him. Many have joined the ranks of ISIS and Jabhat al-Nusra. Over 500 British jihadists are now fighting in Syria and Iraq. As a British jihadist, Amir moves between different hardline jihadist groups fighting each other for dominance, as well as government forces. At the time of filming, Amir was in northwest Syria fighting against Bashar al-Assad's regime. What happened here? This was a school, and one day, it was about 11 o'clock in the morning or probably earlier, a rocket hit and it killed about six people. And then another day, they hit another school in Halab. So it seems like at the moment he's targeting schools. Don't you miss school? Sometimes, yeah, some, some parts of school. It's not really like a, a school in the UK. I went to Meridian School in Peacehaven. I went to Tideway in uh, New Haven. And I went to Long Hill as well. Did you like school in prison? Yeah, I really did. I came to Syria to answer the call of duty, and that is to give victory to the religion of Allah. And the way to do that is to help the oppressed Syrians here and make sure they receive justice. Back at his home near Brighton, we spoke to Amir's father. A father to six children, three of them left to fight in Syria. With Amr, he went with a convoy, but uh, he, he was talking about going to Syria and helping out. And, and I thought I convinced him to stick to aid work. The only person who used to discuss going to Syria and helping out was Amr. But the others, no, I didn't know they were thinking of going to Syria. Most probably they were following the news, following the social media. So that's where they get their information from. Before you make a step like this, you would research what is really going on. Uh, is there a need for me? Uh, what's the situation? Why is there a war? So I research all of that. And in some of the videos, you hear the people call out for help. They say, where is the Muslim nation? Where are the youth? Where are the men? Of course, this is talking about us. That's one thing which uh, pushed me to go there. And also, the things which are happening here, as every, everybody knows, I don't even think it, it happened as bad as anywhere else. With three sons who left to join the war in Syria, we asked Amir's father what would he say to those considering going there to fight. I said to them, like I'm saying to my sons, you know, help Syria from here. Uh, you can collect uh, medicine, food, clothing, you know, all these are needed in Syria, very badly needed. Uh, there will be your government to help the rebels in Syria and help the people of Syria. You know, by arming them. Uh, there's so many things you can do from here, you know. I'm not 
uh, telling you not to go and fight there from the same angle the government is asking you not to go and fight there. And I'm looking at a different angle. If you have a plan in going to Syria and supporting the people here, you need to keep it to yourself and have trust in Allah. Me and my brothers came at two different times and, and both times my parents didn't know because in the situation that we got to again, uh, that we're in today, uh, parents got to a level of selfishness where they would see the situation in Syria is to do with the Syrian people. They're not willing to allow their sons to go there and do what they have to do. So really parents are the last, last people you would tell. Because say I, I just took off really. Uh, obviously you would tell your parents I'm going elsewhere because you can't just leave and then they'll be like, okay, where is it? Yeah, you tell them I'm going, for example, this place uh, for a holiday, etc. and then you go. Jihadist groups in Syria launched a surprise assault on the government's heartland of Latakia in the country's northwest. So one day we were called for backup in the mountain Chalma. They heard that the army was trying to move forward. So when we went there, we found the situation, it wasn't that bad. Uh, there were some rockets hitting on the top, so we couldn't go to the top of the mountain, we had to go from the side. There were some brothers sitting down in the trench. Anyway, as the time went by, we hear some really strong crossfire, and then we hear someone called for backup. He said Mu'azara, and he's back up. So he went to the front. But there was a commander there, and he said, okay, let's go around the, the army, surround them. So we went to the really front, and we saw the enemy about five to 10 meters. My brother was killed in the front line when he was the furthest person in the front. When he ran in, the army actually ran away and retreated. So he was killed for a really good cause and his death was a sign of martyrdom as he felt back and he laughed and he smiled. I have a really strong feeling that he's still alive. Like I'm, I'm really, I do strongly believe that he's still alive. And we believe martyrs are not dead. They're still alive, enjoying themselves in heaven. والله as a Muslim I feel he's a shaheed inshallah. I hope he's in a better place uh, in Jannah inshallah. But same time as a father I you know I lost a son very young you know he just became 18 two days before he was killed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but we believe you know that your time of death is 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 decided before you come to this world so alhamdulillah but well, it's not easy, I mean, to be honest with you. How many battles have you engaged in so far? A few, about three. How was it? It was a good experience. You learn from every battle, but the last one was the best one. Are you never afraid when you fight? When I'm in a battle, I feel calm. And it's a different type of bravery than, for example, when you require bravery outside a battle. It's a different kind because it's from Allah. The, the only thing I'm afraid of is going back or running away or retreating. So Alhamdulillah. You know that you will get training here. It's really between you and yourself that you make sure you learn as much as you could. You learn as much strategy as you could. You learn the area, which area is more important militarily, etc. So it really depends on you, but the basic training you receive in the beginning. The government is trying to tackle the issue of returning fighters from Syria, considering them a terrorist threat. I've chaired a series of meetings in Whitehall to make sure that our intelligence, security and policing services are focused as sharply as they can onto this problem. The estimates are now that this is a greater threat to the UK than the return of foreign jihadis or fighters from the Afghanistan or Pakistan region. And we need to make sure we're doing everything we can, as I said, to keep our country safe. Thinking about Syria and what's going on there has become... At the same time, there are ongoing efforts to dissuade potential British volunteers from travelling to Syria.
though their effectiveness is unknown. Allah does not need your so-called martyrdom when the fight out there is about power and influence in the form of some manufactured jihad. Such strategies are competing with a sophisticated propaganda campaign on social media from jihadist groups, particularly ISIS aimed directly at young British Muslims. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that if you do not take care of the affairs of a mujahid, wait until the calamity of Allah befalls you. But some Syrian rebel groups are not interested in recruiting Western volunteers a message rebel commanders have repeatedly made clear to vice. Even officials with Sukura Sham, an Islamist group in Syria's Islamic Front Coalition, share this view. Wallahu alam, nahnu la, nahnu fi Syria, lasna bi hajit rijal. Rijaluna kusur, walillahi alhamd. Walakin nahtaj li silah nawi, li kay nukawim haza nizam. Nahnu la isa bi hajit rijal, wa inna ma bi hajit amwal, wa silah. I heard this in the UK that they need weapons that don't need men. That's why I also looked into it further. The reason they say this is for political reasons, to be honest. There's a politics, or there's an influence from outside which encourages them to say such a thing, to avoid an effort of, of Islamic unity. In Britain, some people call you a terrorist. What do you think about that? Allah says in the Quran, and prepare for them what you can in power. You terrorize with it your enemy and Allah's enemy and others which you don't know of, Allah knows of. Who I wouldn't want to be a terrorist for is my own people, for the civilians, for the people who I'm here to protect. We believe we are people who are transparent with our actions and we don't fear the blame of the blamers so long as we're doing the truth, you know? This is the dilemma now, you know, it's not just Amr and Jafar, even us as a family, we've been treated like a terrorist. You know? Our houses were raided, we were searched, my passports have been taken away, our laptops, computers, uh, all sorts of paperwork, you know. And I don't know, how can they justify that, you know. Uh, <clears throat> our sons are independent and they decide for themselves why are you trying to send a message to them not to come home or what is this campaign about or are you trying to send a message to the muslim community not to be active and try to help oppressed people in syria the government increasingly states that the british jihadist involvement in syria and iraq is the main security threat now facing the uk citing war crimes seemingly committed by British fighters as evidence. While most British fighters have claimed they have no intention of attacking the UK, a few have begun to make threats on social media. How do you feel about your little brother coming here? He's 16 years old. You know, it was his choice. He didn't tell anyone that he was coming and he just came here. But obviously now he can't go back. And also he has a duty as well. And he, re he really feels strongly about what he's willing to do. So all, all my job now is, is to make sure that he does things correctly and he doesn't go astray. And I look after him. How is he doing, your, your brother? He's really good, alhamdulillah. Yeah. He's a lion. And if he wanted to go home, you would help him to go home? I wouldn't advise him to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because, you know, the uh, campaigns and the policies about people returning home. I mean, we come here, we live in honor. And then why would you go back to prison? Returning isn't a simple option for Amir and Jafar. If they come home, they'll be arrested. If they stay in Syria, they'll probably die there. But like most British fighters in Syria, 
Amir says he has no intention of coming back to the UK. My work is not done here. I came here to give victory for the people and make sure that they receive justice. And we still haven't reached the goal yet.